بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Do they not think that they will be resurrected for on a great day, on a day when they shall stand before the Lord of the worlds? We as Muslims, we have been reminded again and again of accountability. And you know what's the most single, succinct, comprehensive, concise word? The most succinct word for accountability, taqwa. Taqwa is normally translated as the fear of Allah, but as I've said on numerous occasions, that is just a partial meaning. The most accurate definition I can give of taqwa after much reflection is taqwa means to guard oneself from the displeasure of Allah by guarding one's by guarding oneself from the disobedience of Allah. Simple. Taqwa means guarding oneself from the displeasure of Allah by guarding oneself from the disobedience of Allah. That's the meaning of taqwa. And when Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullah, taqwa, another simple word would be God consciousness. Because taqwa isn't just about physical refraining. Taqwa is about being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything, in every single thing. Time and time again, Allah has told us about how to behave about accountability. There are so many verses throughout the Holy Qur'an which speak about accountability. And the best verse is taqwa. We are reminded about it again and again and again. In fact, we are reminded about it so much it seems to pass over us. I've mentioned that the Prophet wasallam would... He had a khutbah, which is known as khutbah al-hajah, the sermon of need. For some reason... This sunnah khutbah and sermon and introductory words of the Prophet ﷺ have fallen into disuse elsewhere except at the time of nikah. So now most people recognize these words of the Prophet ﷺ at the time of nikah, at the time of marriage. Even though the, these words and this introductory sermon of the Prophet ﷺ wasn't restricted to marriage. For him, in the hadith, in the terminology of the hadith, this is known as khutbatul hajah, the khutbah, the sermon of need. And the Prophet ﷺ would recite this on many occasions, on the mimbar, off the mimbar, in gatherings, and even at the time of nikah. And we've all heard it at the time of nikah. And what is that khutbah? It's, it's part of it we mention at the beginning of speeches, but the, most, the, the greatest part of that khutbah, of that sermon, and of those words that Rasulullah would use frequently, including at the time of nikah, most of those words are three verses of the Holy Qur'an. And you've all heard them. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We don't have time to translate or go into the explanation of these verses but you will hear one word and one theme running through all of these verses which is fear Allah, be conscious of Allah taqwa, ittaqu Allah, taqwa, ittaqu Allah, taqwa, ittaqu Allah, taqwa even at the time of marriage we are never allowed to forget our responsibility of being conscious of Allah. And that is accountability. And I'll end with just one mention about taqwa. One great scholar and saint was asked, how do you define taqwa? What is taqwa? And he said, taqwa is that you empty the thoughts of your mind and the emotions and feelings of your heart onto a large platter, and then you walk around in the marketplace with your thoughts and your emotions and feelings in full view of the people, and you are not the least embarrassed. That is taqwa. <laughs> Oh,
وسلم دائما